The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is, 15th chapter, text number 1, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 26th of February, 1974, in Calcutta, India. Translation The Blessed Lord said, There is a banyan tree which has its roots upward and its branches downward, whose leaves are the Vedic hymns. One who knows this tree is the knower of the Vedas. Report After the discussion of the importance of bhakti yoga, one may question, what about the Vedas? It is explained in this chapter that the purpose of Vedic study is to understand Krishna. Therefore, one who is in Krishna consciousness, who is engaged in devotional service, already knows the Vedas. The entanglement of this material world is compared here to a banyan tree. For one who is engaged in fruitive activities, there is no end to the banyan tree. He wanders from one branch to another, to another, to another. The tree of this material world has no end. For one who is attached to this tree, there is no possibility of liberation. The Vedic hymns, meant for elevating oneself, are called the leaves of this tree. This tree's roots grow upward because they begin from where Brahma is located, the topmost planet of this universe. If one can understand this indestructible tree of illusion, then one can get out of it. This process of extrication should be understood. In the previous chapters, it has been explained that there are many processes by which to get out of the material entanglement. And up to the 13th chapter, we have seen that devotional service to the Supreme Lord is the best way. Now the basic principle of devotional service is detachment from material activities and attachment to the transcendental service of the Lord. The process of breaking attachment to the material world is discussed in the beginning of this chapter. The root of this material existence grows upward. This means that it begins from the total material substance, from the topmost planet of the universe. From there, the whole universe is expanded with so many branches representing the various planetary systems. The fruits represent the results of the living entity's activities, namely religion, economic development, sense gratification, and liberation. Now, there is no ready experience in this world of a tree situated with its branches down and its roots up. But there is such a thing. That tree can be found beside a reservoir of water. We can see that the trees on the bank reflect upon the water with their branches down and their roots up. In other words, the tree of this material world is only a reflection of the real tree of the spiritual world. This reflection of the spiritual world is situated on desire, just as the tree's reflection is situated on water. Desire is the cause of things being situated in this reflected material light. One who wants to get out of this material existence must know this tree thoroughly through analytical study. Then he can cut off his relationship with it. This tree, being the reflection of the real tree, is an exact replica. Everything is there in the spiritual world. The impersonalists take Brahma to be the root of this material tree. And from the root, according to the Sankhya philosophy, come Prakriti, Purusha, and then the three Gunas. Then the five gross material elements, the Pancha Mahabhuta. Then the ten senses, Dashindriya, mind, etc. In this way, they divide up the whole material world. If Brahma is the center of all manifestations, then this material world is a manifestation of the center by 180 degrees, and the other 180 degrees constitute the spiritual world. The material world is the perverted reflection, so the spiritual world must have the same variegatedness, but in reality. Prakriti is the external energy of the Supreme Lord, and the Purusha is the Supreme Lord Himself. And that is explained in the Bhagavad Gita. 
Since this manifestation is material, it is temporary. A reflection is temporary, for at some, it is sometimes seen and sometimes not seen. But the origin from whence the reflection is reflected is eternal. The material reflection of the real tree has to be cut off. When it is said that a person knows the Vedas, it is assumed that he knows how to cut off attachment to this material world. If one knows that process, he actually knows the Vedas. One who is attracted by the ritualistic formulas of the Vedas is attracted by the beautiful green leaves of the tree. He does not exactly know the purpose of the Vedas. The purpose of the Vedas, as disclosed by the Personality of Godhead Himself, is to cut down this reflected tree and attain the real tree of the spiritual world. Now I explain. So this material world is a converted reflection of the transcendental spiritual world. Everything that we find here and somehow we can trace its origins to the spiritual world. Uh, just like we have... That's what they say. Uddha Mulam. Mulam means root. They say from the root the tree grows and becomes expanded. So now this experience, the mula is upside and the tree is expanding in this way. The branches are down. Here we have got to experience all these trees. The root is down and the branches are spread up. Here the experience is that. That means this material is created not from this matter, from spiritual world. What? So it's just as in the uh, spirit, in the material world, there are personal relationships. Uh, just like everyone is trying to make friends, has family. Just like if you have to keep yourself, the legs are off and head down. Somebody keep it like this. How long you feel comfortable? If you are, somebody takes your legs and catches you and your head down, then it is not very comfortable. So this whole material world is like that. Buddha mulam. The mulam should, should have been down, but it is up. There was this discomfort. And another explanation is the it is parvati reflection. We have got experience of the Urdha Mulam. Uh, I think I have explained that. That a tree on the bank of a river or the bank of a pond, the tree is standing, but the reflection we find that uh, the same tree has become Urdha Mulam and Adosha. So by this statement, Krishna says that this is not real. That reflection in the water of the tree is not real. Real tree is up. Similarly, real enjoyment, real varieties, everything is in the spiritual world. It is simply reflection. It is not fact. Therefore, our enjoyment here is called maya, illusion. So in later slokas, Krishna has described how to get out, to, out of this mind reflection and go to the real tree that has been described. Macmillan comes. The trade manager, statistics. They have said that our Bhagavad Gita sale is increasing, other Bhagavad Gita decreases. In America also they are seriously studying how this movement is being spread so quickly. People ask me also how it is wonderfully increasing. And because there is no adultery, before the public. And that's a fact. If you don't accept this Krishna consciousness movement, you'll never be out. This is fact. Everything is there. Social, political, economical, 
philosophical, religious, all perfect knowledge. So, what is to be done next? Prasadam. Prasadam.